Today this video is going to go over samples and population. First of all, we need to know what those words mean. So population, that's the whole group of either people or objects that's going to be considered for some type of survey. So I'm going to highlight that. The whole group that's trying to be considered. Then the sample, that's only part of the population that's supposed to represent the whole group. So there's a visual illustration um, below. This whole entire rectangle would be the whole population. Then somehow I would select a smaller group to ask questions to because this big group would be um, maybe impossible or it'd be very time consuming. So I could just take a small group and ask them the question to represent the whole group. Now, your sample can either be random or it can be biased. If you want to have a valid survey, um, you want to get a random sampling of people. And that just means that everybody has an equal chance of being selected. Um, every person, if it's an object or some other thing that's going to happen, but the major thing is that they have an equal chance of being selected. Everybody has an equal chance. Then the opposite of that would be the biased sample, and that's when only part of the group um, doesn't get fairly represented. It's not fair for everybody. So not fairly represented. Okay, so let's look at an example that's um, easy to understand for seventh graders. Um, the example I'm going to use is if I want to ask a question and get seventh grade students' opinions, um, they would be my population. And then one way I could take a survey is to just ask every kid in Miss Side's second period um, class. And that would be biased because any students who aren't even in my class don't have a chance. And then students who are in a different period also do not have a chance. So this grouping, this little sample would be biased. However, if I said I was gonna select four, that should be students, four students from each of Ms. Side's classes and Coach Harvey's classes, then that would be random and fair because every student that's in seventh grade now has a chance of being selected because I'm looking at both teachers' classes and I'm taking four kids from each class. Now back to the ones that are in your journal. Um, this one says Roberto wants to know the favorite sport of adults in his hometown. He surveys 50 adults at a baseball game. Is this sample random or biased? So if we look at who he's going to survey, that's the smaller um, grouping, okay? He's gonna survey 50 adults at a baseball game. And he's wanting to know the favorite sport of adults in his town, okay? So it's okay that he asked only adults, that's okay, because his his question is looking at adults. However, the um, place he went to ask at a baseball game, that's not making it fair for his whole, represent his whole town. So this would be biased. And it's biased because he was only at a baseball game when he asked the question. The second one, it says Paula wants to know the favorite type of music for students in her class. She puts the names of all the students in a hat and draws eight names without looking and surveys those students. Okay, so when we look at it, um, who she's going to ask, she is going to um, ask eight people in her class. Um... And what she's looking at is favorite type of music for students in her class. 
So because she is, um, she put the names in a hat and she got all the students' names in a hat, then that is fair because since she's really only wanting to ask kids in her class, everybody's name was in the hat and they had a fair and equal chance of getting um, drawn out. So this one would be random and it's because all the names were in the hat. Um, you could also say that she did it um, without looking would also make it random. So now the question that's being asked to the person taking the survey can also be either biased or um, a non-biased question. So if something is biased, it is trying to influence people. And it can influence them to either be uh, more positive or more negative, depending on what you want them to say. You can use certain words in your question to make them feel um, more positive or more negative about a situation. Okay, so influencing people, you're going to use words or phrases that are more positive or more negative. If you have a non-biased question, um, everything is neutral and you allow the person to reflect their own opinion without using positive or negative words. So here's a couple of um, examples. This first one says, would a theme park with expensive ticket prices be a good place for a family vacation? So we wanna know, is this question biased or non-biased? So looking for any kind of influential words, whether they be positive or negative, expensive, sometimes can make people think that it's bad. Um, some people, if it's for, um, a park maybe they think that that means it's really 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 super good but it doesn't matter if it's good or bad what we're looking at is it is trying to influence people so this one would be biased um, the word expensive um, tries to influence and some people might mean think that that has really awesome rides and you should go there, but some people also might think that it's not good for family vacation because it's so expensive. Um, the next question, what's your favorite season of the year? So this does not, um, it just says what's your favorite. It doesn't um, try to say one season is better than the other. So for this one, um, we would say it's non-biased because the person gets to um, reflect your own opinion. It doesn't say summer's hot. It doesn't say winter's cold. Um, it just, you get your own opinion about any season of the year. Okay, two more. This one says, do you like soft, cuddly puppies more than cats? Now this one, when you're looking, some influential words, um, soft and cuddly. Even though they didn't say any bad words towards cats, they're trying to influence people saying that puppies are um, soft and cuddly, even though sometimes dogs can be mean too. Um, the soft and cuddly words would be your influential way <clears throat> of trying to get people to pick dogs. Okay, the next one, it says, do you think bike helmets should be mandatory for all bike riders? Sometimes people think the word mandatory is a negative word, but actually this is letting people um, have their own opinion because they're not saying bike helmets are good. They're not saying bike helmets are bad. They're not saying bike helmets save so many lives. They're just saying, do you think bike helmets should be mandatory? Do you think bike helmets should be mandatory for all bike riders? And it's not saying it's just for kids or grown-ups. Um, 
It's just asking your opinion without using extra words. Um, you get your own opinion. <laughs> 